Welcome to Politics Unplugged. I'm Ann Trujillo. Former Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper ended his bid for the White House. So how does Senator Hickenlooper sound? Now, Hickenlooper's presidential campaign never caught traction. Nationally, he failed to poll above 1%. But could we still see Hickenlooper's name on the 2020 ballot? People want to know what comes next for me. I've heard from so many Coloradans who want me to run for the United States Senate. They remind me how much is at stake for our country and our state. I intend to give that some serious thought. Now, there are several Democrats already running to take on Cory Gardner for his U.S. Senate seat, including State Representative Angela Williams and former State Representative Andrew Romanoff, both saying if Hickenlooper runs, they are not dropping out. Here's Romanoff. If John Hickenlooper enters the Senate race, would you consider exiting? No. You're in it. Yeah, look, I'm running for uh, the people of Colorado who don't have a voice, who aren't being represented in the U.S. Senate today, uh, and they deserve a champion. And Angela Williams said Hickenlooper will have some explaining to do to Colorado voters and that if he runs, it won't be a coronation. Well, Morgan Carroll is the chair of the Democratic Party and joins us now, also a former state lawmaker. Almost a dozen people want this job Democrats, why? Oh, so many reasons. Um, the amount of energy to take out Cory Gardner from the Senate seat is so strong. People are really, really motivated. Um, we're saying this both on the grassroots and in terms of just a pent up appetite for people who are ready to run against Cory Gardner and take him on. Part of that's because he promised and pretended to be somebody he wasn't in 2014. Part of it's the actual record he's been trying to run from since he's really been in there. And overall, more people are seeing the consequences of why it matters, either to a trail of dead bills under Mitch McConnell's leadership. There's no path to the majority for the federal U.S. Senate that doesn't go through flipping Colorado seats. So what we're seeing is an enthusiastic crowd, any win, really any one of which would be in a really strong position to take off Cory Gardner. Because it's not just Colorado saying, the Colorado Democratic Party saying he is vulnerable, but it really is on a national level that people are looking at this seat a lot of hands are in are in this race or will be in this race right the country the constitution the courts the cabinet members every policy issue people cares about are going to be looking at cory gardner but especially those of us locally we know we remember when he promised to be an independent voice for us in colorado and what we've seen instead is a long track record of pandering to wealthy special interests, taking a lot of money from the insurance industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the gun lobby, and the trail of dead inaction on bills really speaks for itself. This state is innovative, it's industrious, it's problem solving, and simply doing the rubber stamp for, for Donald Trump, just it's not gonna cut up. Uh, Colorado also has this independence streak that you never really know where Colorado voters are going to end up. And, and we right. seem to like having one Democrat, one uh, Republican in the US Senate, no? I think we like people who think independently regardless of labels. And what that means is if you're in touch with Colorado voters, if you're paying attention to things like the high cost of housing, if you're paying attention to things like the high cost of health care, if you're in touch with the real world in Colorado and willing to think for yourself uh, and actually come up with something that delivers results, you're going to do well. But when you pretend that you're this independent voice and then you go on and vote with Donald Trump over 90% of the time, this state hates Trump. That is not the bargain that people signed up for. So I think there's going to be a lot of voters who feel like there were promises made that were broken and we're ready for an upgrade. Yeah, well, this day didn't go with Trump, but there are plenty of Trump supporters in Colorado. Yep, we yep. should say that. Let's talk about Governor Hickenlooper for a moment. I know you can't play any sides here, but what what do you think the timeline would be for him to decide to get in this race? It would have to be fairly soon, right? Well, I think the field is largely going to be fixed sometime in 2019. I wouldn't be surprised if he entered a field. We have a very strong field for what is there. I don't know if I can speculate on exactly his timing, but I definitely know it's too late to do it next year. So it would be probably in the next month or two. And he has also said that he wasn't necessarily suited for the Senate. I remember him saying that on this program. It's going to take some work for him to convince voters that this is the job he wants. 
Yeah, I think we shouldn't take for granted that it's inherently our seat to get. So any of the candidates, while momentum and policy is on our side, are going to have to make their case about why they're the best person to be Colorado's next senator. I think the worst mistake that could be made is just simply assuming that any of us are automatically. We have to go earn and make the case with the voters. And I think every one of the candidates is going to have to do that. And there's a, there's a great assortment of Democrats who are running, who have already said that they are running. So what is it, I mean, what will be the strategy to, to move forward and be the, the nominee? I think we really need to point out why Cory Gardner is hiding from his record. When you simply have an honest assessment of what he in fact has done, not what he's said, but what he's actually done, and take a look side by side with any of our candidates. That's the case we have to make to Colorado. It's gonna be a lot of hard work. It's obviously gonna be a lot of fundraising, but we're gonna to need to be in every corner of the state listening first and actually showing not only why there's a better vision coming from our candidates, but where Cory Gardner has repeatedly either taken the wrong side or failed to lead over and over and over and over again. So with 30 seconds, what are the issues, though, that Democratic voters will be looking for? I think Democratic voters are going to be looking at health care. Are we willing to take on the health care, special interest lobby, affordable housing, transportation, infrastructure projects? Um, civility, what kind of society do we want to live in, how do we really want to treat each other, education is going to be a top priority, and making sure we have an economy that isn't just ballooning the deficit for tax cuts for the rich, but that we're actually looking at growing wages and having a fair tax policy that works for ordinary people. 2020 will be an interesting year. Morgan Carroll, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Back in a moment.